Good morning. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. He daily loadeth us with benefits. His mercies are new every morning. He restoreth my soul. The Bible goes on and on. Today's a day of worship. Today is a day of thanksgiving. Here's a quote I've used many times before. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Paul said, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know and I am persuaded. Abraham said in Romans chapter 4, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. It's a blessing to know God, but it's a blessing to trust God. Jesus on the cross to those who had crucified him and treated him so cruelly, he prays to his father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Paul, speaking about that same group of people in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, said, Had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known. In John chapter 1 and verse 10, the Bible says about our Savior, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He's the creator of life. He's the sustainer of life. But the world didn't recognize that. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says the reason for that. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Jesus was speaking one day to a woman in John chapter 4. And he said this to her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee a drink of living water, if you only knew who I was. We know by faith in the word of God we can know God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I'd like to read some verses in 1 John chapter 5, beginning in verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, speaking of the scripture in verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. God wants us to know some things, and certainly about our salvation Hebrews chapter 11 is called the great chapter of faith in the Bible. In verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And remember in that chapter it says, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, he said, he said, by his word he created all things. By faith. In Hebrews 11, Abel, by faith, Enoch, by faith, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, on and on. It gives the lives, the accounts of Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel. In verse 33, it says, who through faith obtained promises. They saw, they realized the result of their faith. But beginning in verse 35 of that chapter to the end of that chapter, the Bible speaks about the others who were not delivered. They received not the promises of God in this life. They did in the next life. And it talked about so great a faith to trust God through those things. In John chapter 13, Jesus was giving his disciples an example of humility in washing their feet. Peter wanted no part of that. He did want, want Jesus to wash his feet. He wanted to wash the Lord's feet. But Jesus responded to Peter and said this, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Interesting statement. Understand today that you will not understand everything about God or how he works. Know today that you will never in this life completely know all the things that God is doing and why. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part But then shall I know, even as also I am known. There is a day coming. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, this present moment. 
and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That is the promise of God. And though it's not realized now, it is promised for us in the future. 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, no argument. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. We read some of the stories in the Bible and prophecies, and we say, how could that be? But by faith, we believe those things. It's all right to ask God questions. It's just not all right to question God. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His ways are past finding out how unsearchable are his judgments. One commentator wrote this, under dark providences, the meaning of which is not yet known by us, to wait the Lord's own time to make things clear and plain to us, and in the meantime to patiently submit to his divine will. Isaiah 50 and verse 10, who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Boy, that's a terrible place to be. But it goes on and says, let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon our God or his God. What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Think with me about Job in the Bible. If you've ever read the book of Job, it's one of trial and tribulation and heartache. And Job did not know why he was suffering. He, he asked that question many, many times. He didn't understand, but he trusted God through it. And we come to the last chapter in the book of Job. In chapter 42 and verse 5, Job says this, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I repent in dust and ashes. He saw the purpose of all of that suffering. Joseph in the Bible, his brethren, his brothers hated him. They mistreated him, but God had a plan for his life. He was sold into slavery. He was taken down into Egypt. But towards the end of his life, when he saw his brothers again, he said, you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good to bring at, as it is this day to pass to save many souls alive. God had a purpose in that suffering, in that trial in Joseph's life. Why did our Savior suffer? He knew that he was going to the cross. For this cause came I into this world. He told his disciples that he must go up to Jerusalem and die and to be buried and raise again the third day, the resurrection. We find in the scriptures, for this cause came I into the world. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. We read in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Father. He knew in the future that there would be great joy because of his suffering at the present time. If any man suffers as a Christian, Peter tells us, let him rejoice in that because God has a plan Trust him when dark doubts assail thee. Trust him when thy faith is small. Trust him when to simply trust him is the hardest thing of all. There are mysteries that we don't understand. There are events that we question. There are circumstances that baffle our minds. But the scripture says, he doeth all things well. The Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Trust God. One day it will be worth it all, and we'll rejoice in heaven together. God bless you.